Go Inside the Crimson Tide, Tider Insider TV with Rodney Orr and Gary Harris. Since Nick Saban's arrival, signing day has turned into a second Christmas for Tide football fans. All across the county, or the country, I should say, last Wednesday, high school athletes put pen to paper declaring their college choices. And once again, the Crimson Tide landed what many recruiting experts consider the number one signing class in the country. And proof of that is in the pudding. Look at the different rankings. Only Scout.com not ranking Alabama number one. They have the Tide coming in at number two with 24-7 sports rivals and ESPN all saying the Tide's recruiting hall was the best in the country. And with that, we say good evening, everybody, and welcome into Tider Insider TV, presented by Buffalo Rock, alongside TiderInsider.com founder Rodney Orr. I'm Gary Harris. Tonight, ice cold Pepsi Cola is on the menu to keep us refreshed during the show, because Rodney, we've got a lot to talk about it, and let's get right to it. Last Wednesday, we knew what was coming, but still, there's always a little bit of concern. You, you, you know, until actually the letters come in, you know, Landon Collins, there was a lot of rumor and innuendo that he still might flip and go to LSU, and a couple of other guys waited for a while to send them in. But basically, Alabama got everybody they wanted. Plus, they added a couple of late signees, Dalvin Tomlinson and Corin Curvin, a couple of big defensive linemen. We'll talk more about them later. But first, Rod, despite all the high star rankings, the most important question always in regards to recruiting class is did Alabama fill its 2012 recruiting needs? Yeah, I think they did, Gary, when you look at it, certainly. Uh, you know, Alabama needed cornerbacks. We talked about that. They went to the junior college ranks, got two of the best in Travell Dixon and Dion Ballou. The great thing is both of those guys will be here this spring. Going through spring practice gives them an opportunity to get acclimated to, to what they need to learn, and uh, that certainly gives them a huge uh, advantage and gives Alabama's defense a, an advantage in terms of preparing those guys for next season. But, uh, you know, also Landon Collins, you mentioned him, Gary, great safety prospect, maybe the heir apparent to Mark Barron back there. Uh, so that was a huge pickup as well. You look at the linebackers, perhaps the best linebacker group in the country. We've talked about all of them, Denzel Duvall, Reggie Raglan, Dylan Lee, Ryan Anderson. You can go on and on and on. Tyler Hayes from down the down the road at Thomasville. So a great class in that regard. They got some outstanding defensive linemen. You mentioned Curvin. Tomlinson, Darren Lake from right over down the street at Sumter. So, uh, you know, Gary, a great defensive class. We've talked about that, you know, quite a bit, uh, the success they had on that side of the ball. And, and also offensively, you know, they, they needed a couple of offensive tackles. They got those guys, Brandon Green, Brandon Hill, two outstanding prospects for down the road. Uh, T.J. Yeldon, one of the finest running backs in the country. Great core receivers when you talk about Amari Cooper and uh, also – Chris Black, Eddie Williams is another guy. So we could keep going on and on and on about the class, but it was a tremendous class. All right, Rodney. And uh, when Nick Saban met with reporters on uh, Wednesday, he was obviously pretty pleased with the class that he landed. However, in true Saban fashion, the coach is quick to point out, while these recruits look good right now, rankings don't always turn into reality. I say this every year, but, you know, recruiting is not an exact science. And uh, no one knows for sure how these players are going to develop in the future. And um, that, that's certainly something that we work hard on here uh, as coaches and teachers is to help these players develop. But uh, how adolescents are going to respond two or three years out, nobody can really predict. All right, Rod, and... Uh... Just a little while ago, you were talking about a couple of the names. Let's go ahead, and it's such a good-looking class on paper in terms of the rankings, but let's talk about some of the guys that have the best probability, according to the recruiting services, of turning into great players at the college level. Those are the uh, five-star recruits. Let's begin with the young man you talked about earlier, Landon Collins, safety out of Louisiana. Uh, really hotly contested recruiting battle for him. He chose Alabama on national TV at the Under Armour All-American game against the wishes of his mother, but he stuck with the tide. and. You know, I guess it'd be very surprising if he doesn't play. Oh, I think he'll definitely play, Gary. You know, people compare him a little bit to Mark Barron, maybe even a little more athletic, maybe better speed, the ability to cover a little bit better. 
you know, just coming out of high school. And uh, so, again, I think, as you mentioned, look for him to contribute very early next season. Eddie Williams, uh, Alabama's first commitment for the class of 2012, and really he never wavered despite offers from all over the country. 6'3", maybe 6'4", 205 pounds. At one time, it looked like he would be a safety, but Alabama with a lot of uh, good-looking defensive backs and needing an impact player at the receiver position. So it looks like, Rodney, he might start out in offense. Yeah, and that was actually him, I think, throwing the ball on that particular play. Yeah, he plays play, quarterback, Gary. too. Yeah, and, and so when you look at him, Gary, he's a great athlete. It's hard to imagine a better pure athlete, perhaps, in this class, and Eddie Williams could play, as you mentioned, wide receiver, safety. People compare him. Or, or certainly rank him in the same category as Landon Collins as a safety. But again, I think he ends up, uh, starts out his career as a wide receiver. You know, T.J. Yeldon is recognized as the top running back prospect in the state of Alabama, maybe one of the best states produced in, in some time. And, and arguably, you could say he's the top running back prospect in the country. Originally committed to Auburn, but in December, right before he was due to enroll in college because he graduated from high school early, he changed his mind and wound up rolling with the tie. Yeah, I mean, I think I just committed a little too early, and I wasn't uh, looking into my uh, career. But, I mean, like I said, I have nothing against Auburn. I mean, Alabama was just the best place for me. Rodney, we've talked about this before, uh, what a talented young man this is. But give Auburn credit. The reason they got a commitment is they really went for him full bore when Alabama, quite honestly, was still evaluating. Now, to Alabama's credit, they came back in, closed the deal, and he's enrolled right now at UA. But he really is a, a special prospect with some talents that, uh, you know, you just can't coach that type of size, speed, athleticism. Look at it right there. I mean, this is an unbelievable football. Well, I thought it was very important that Alabama get a, a really top-notch back in this class. I think Kenyon Drake certainly has potential to be outstanding, but when you look at T.J. Yeldon, he has a chance, I think, to be very special, too. And, and you know, Gary, Alabama was recruiting Russell Shell out of Pennsylvania. He looked like the perfect fit for the Alabama offense. Of course, he's a long way from home. Ended up at Pitt. And here T.J. Yeldon is at Daphne, less than four hours away. And, you know, he might now be the best, by the time it's all been said and done, as you mentioned, the best running back in the country. And, you know, as you look at him, you see the size, you see the ability to catch the ball, look at his ability to make plays, the vision. Kind of reminds me a little bit in some ways of, of Bobby Humphrey. You know, just a tremendous talent. You know, Jeremy Pruitt, his uh, recruiting coach, Nick Saban, obviously deserve a lot of credit for getting T.J. Yeldon to sign. But a young man that probably deserves the most credit is his high school teammate, Ryan Anderson, who did a great job of recruiting him all along. But we don't want to just talk about his ability to recruit. This is a great football player in his own right and has been compared to Courtney Upshaw. If you watch the tape, it's a pretty good comparison. Yeah, I mean, you mentioned Courtney Upshaw, you know. But the thing about it is, Gary, Ryan Anderson is a perfect example of you never know what's going to happen in terms of a player developing. Because last year this time, you know, he's a guy that had been a defensive lineman. A lot of schools really didn't know about him. We talked about Auburn getting in early on T.J. Yeldon. Alabama got in early on Anderson. They wanted to see what he looked like as a stand-up defensive end. Mike Vickery down there at Daphne, Coach Glenn Vickery as well. They, they stood him up allowed coaches the opportunity last spring to see what he could do standing up as a defensive end Alabama or as a jack linebacker type. Alabama offered him very early and by the end of the year he might have been the best in the country at his position. I mean maybe even better than Channing Ward, you know, the highly regarded guy from Mississippi who, who signed with Ole Miss and could have gone anywhere. You know, one thing about him too, watching him on tape, you see the size, the speed, uh, but you know, he, and I mean this in a good way, he plays with with a nasty disposition. I mean, he's, he's not in a good mood on the football field. He's out to, to do some damage. Yeah, very smart player, Gary. He's very aggressive uh, in that way. He's got great size coming in. He's bigger than Courtney Upshaw, actually, coming right. in, you know, at about 250. So, again, I, I think, you know, obviously the comparisons to Courtney Upshaw are natural, and I, I think they're you know, probably valid. All right, still to come on TITV, we're just getting cranked up. What makes Nick Saban such a good recruiter? We'll ask some of the incoming freshmen that very question. Plus, we actually took some opportunities away from guys that really wanted to come to Alabama. Nick Saban sounds off on his inability to great shirt players in this class and how forbidding the practice is actually bad for the athlete. And uh, we'll have that coming up. Plus, we'll get to your phone calls and your emails. You can give us a ring, as always, at 205-348-WVUA. That's 348-9882. Or email us at TITV at WVUATV.com. But up next, 
The Alabama men's basketball team is in Auburn tonight without its second leading scorer in rebounding. We'll discuss the Tony Mitchell suspension coming up. Stay tuned. You're watching the show that takes you inside the Crimson Tide. Tider Insider TV presented by Buffalo Rock. Welcome back to Tider Insider TV. He's Rodney Orr. I'm Gary Harris. Thanks for tuning in. It came down yesterday, Alabama, announcing that uh, second leading scorer and rebounder Tony Mitchell will not be in the lineup tonight when the Tide faces in-state rival Auburn at the Auburn Arena. Mitchell was suspended indefinitely on Monday by head coach Anthony Grant for conduct detrimental to the team. A tip-off for the game tonight is set for 8 p.m., but uh, Mitchell won't be there. And, and Rodney, let's let's talk about this. We've been hearing for some time, we know what a talented player is, and you see it right here. He is an athletic freak, can run, can jump. When he's playing well offensively, he can also defend. But we've been hearing for some time that the attitude is just not good. He's adversely affected other players on the team, has not uh, done at times what the coaches have asked him to do. Coach Grant didn't get into much detail yesterday, but he did tell us that it was a culmination of things that led to the suspension on Monday. Indefinite is a big word there because it could be one game. It could be for the rest of the season. But obviously, with a player of that talent level, your second leading scorer and rebounder, for him to be suspended leads me to believe that Coach Grant had no other recourse. And obviously, when you suspend a player, that, that's a very serious decision. To well, make. when you're disrupting the team, you're not helping the team. That's right. I mean, so he, he did what he had to do. And you, so you ha certainly give – you know, Grant credit, and I know Nick Jacobs, I think, started in the Ole Miss game, Ole Miss game and, and young freshman. But, again, you know, it's, it's a loss in some ways. But then again, is it really a loss? You know, last year he suspended Jamaica Green, who is the other holdover from the Mark Godfrey era. But both are very talented players and arguably the two best players on the team. But they weren't recruited by Coach Grant. They didn't necessarily come up in his system, although they are his players now. Any connection there, you think? Well, I mean, that, that's hard for me to say. But, you know, anytime you do have a new coach who ha hasn't recruited or didn't recruit those players, we saw it in football here. You know, let's be honest. When Nick Saban, not everyone bought in his first year. And there were some suspensions some that year. Players. Some very talented players. So I don't think it's unusual. D.J. Hall. Yeah. You know what? That's yeah, sometimes the transition with players from the previous staff to the new staff has some bumps in the road. We do know this. It's a big game for Alabama tonight. Yeah, it's a road game. They'll get another crack at Auburn at home. But uh, this is one Alabama needs as they make a push for the NCAA tournament. Well, when Tider Insider TV continues, we go back to talking football. What does Nick Saban have to say about the controversial practice of gray shirting? Also ahead, we want to hear from you. Give us a ring at 205-348-WVUA. That's 348-9882. Or email us at TITV at WVUATV.com. But as we go to break, we'll hear from two more in-state signees. What do they have to say about their future as members of the Alabama Crimson? I want to establish myself as one of the, the dominant run, linebackers down there for the class coming in. If I do what I have to do and come in and play, learn the system, get in the weight room, I, 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 shall, I shall have a great chance of playing. Coach Saban said I, I'm athletic enough to play every position on defensive line. Also, um, he told me that I got to come in and work hard, work hard at it, keep at it going, keep going. Welcome back. Phone calls in a moment. But first, new restrictions this year by the Southeastern Conference presented are prevented, I should say, presented teams with a challenge because it prevented them from signing more than 25 players. Gray shirting, as it's called, was uh, unpopular with many of the presidents in the league and conference officials because they felt coaches didn't have the athlete's best interest at heart. It is an assessment that Nick Saban very much disagrees with. There was so much of a negative reaction to this whole idea of what you all call gray shirting. Uh, but I think basically what we did is because um, of the cynical attitude a lot of people have toward whether coaches are really doing what's in best, the best interest of the young people that we coach, which I sort of resent, to be honest with you, because that's one of the things that we pride ourselves in. Um, we actually took some opportunities away from guys that really wanted to come to Alabama uh, that we couldn't sign, and they couldn't come here because... We, we, we couldn't offer that option to them. Rodney, we know a number of cases where gray shirting was actually very, actually very beneficial to players, uh, but yet it has such a negative connotation attached to it now. Is that because of Nick Saban and Alabama's success with the practice, do you think? I mean, I really don't know, Gary, why it has developed such a negative connotation. We've talked about, you know, the success stories on some guys that have gray shirted, obviously. You know, for example, John Parker Wilson, 
uh, holds many records here, uh, passing records. And he would not have been able to have been signed in that class by Mike Shula had he not been offered a gray shirt opportunity. He came in now again. He didn't have to red shirt his freshman year, but the gray shirt allowed him to sign with Alabama. He set out that first semester, joined the program after that. Drew Davis signed in that same class, went on to be here for six years, ended up starting the last two years, winning a national championship. You know, Gary, had he not been able to gray shirt, he would not have been able to fulfill his dream of playing for Alabama. So I, I really don't know what's so negative about a kid either. having an opportunity to fulfill the dream of, of signing with a particular school. Uh, you know, when there's an agreement in place between the kid and the coach, coaching staff, that he'd gray shirt. And there are a couple young men this year that wanted to sign with Alabama very badly, and under the old system, they would have been allowed to, but instead they chose to go elsewhere. Well, despite uh, any of the restrictions that are out there on recruiting since Nick Saban's arrival at Alabama, the Crimson Tide has gone way, way up. So we wondered, what makes Coach Saban such a good recruiter? Who better to ask than some of his early signees? Just his honesty. And, um, you know, he, he's down to business. You know, he's, he's, he's going to tell you exactly what he needs. He, he doesn't sugarcoat anything. he tell you how it is. He, he doesn't come in and make promises or nothing like that. He comes in, if not anything, he comes in as professional and a businessman and just lets you know what reality is. You know exactly what he's looking for, um, what he sees you doing. He's not, uh, doesn't really try to sugarcoat anything. He told me the plan that he had for me. He wanted to have a plan for me before I came in here. And I really like that about this place. Well, Rod, he's one of the best in the business. And uh, you heard the, some of the early signees talking about it right there. But I think one of the things that makes him so good is his ability not just to talk in terms of football or academics, which is what most coaches focus on, but life skills, becoming a better person, being able to be successful in whatever your endeavor is after college. Just the total plan that he puts in place for the student athlete that encompasses the rest of their lives. Well, and also, Gary, I think certainly another thing that, that really helps him out is the success that he's had in, in, in all of those things that you talk about, all those things that you mentioned. I mean, the track record speaks for itself. And, you know, he, he's developed, you see how many guys were on the honor roll? What yeah. was it, 38, uh, a, a record. And then you talk about the guys who are getting drafted, developed as football players as well. So, again, I think when you look at, overall the program that he puts in place the results that you see in each each area have been you know certainly uh, something that's been made a strong impact on kids out there and then they see Alabama the success they're having on the field I mean you you talk to a lot of recruits now uh, they've done some national some of these national networks have talked to some of the top recruits and asked them what's your dream offer you know it used to be USC now it's Alabama wow that says a lot all right 205-348-WVUA is the phone Number, let's take some calls, beginning with Lloyd in North Shelby County. Lloyd, welcome into the program. Hey, how you doing? Hey, doing well. I got a question for you. Is yes. Durant and Carter uh, on campus now? Yes, um, unless he's left, that, and that's, that would be news to me. Yeah, he's been on uh, campus and was in school in the fall, and I'm assuming working toward uh, being on the team, the active team, next uh, fall. Yeah, and, and again, unless something's changed that we don't know about, he's, he's, he's expected to join the team, and... I know that uh, there's a lot of high expectations. Gary, talking to some people who had an opportunity to see him practice, he's got a lot of, lot of talent. Yeah, could be a really, really good player. All right, we're going to get to some more phone calls when we come back, so uh, stay with us. More questions and uh, some emails, too, on Tider Insider TV. Phone lines are open right now at 205-348-WVUA. That's 348-9882. Let's go back to the phones and go to Hansville and talk with Troy, who's been waiting. Troy, how are you? Fine, thank you. Good. Go ahead, Troy. Uh, I'd like to know uh, who all gets the championship rings, if it's the whole team or everybody on scholarship or you know, it, the, the, yeah, the schools, the, head, the coaching staff usually sets the parameters that, uh, for that. From what I understand, two years ago for Alabama, every player got one. Uh, Walk-ons, scholarship players, redshirted players. Um, you know, that's, I don't know that they released that information, but that's what I've heard from players that I've talked to. Yeah, that, that, well, that's what you would think would mm -hmm. happen. And, again, I, I don't know, you know, if they, they set a limit on terms of the numbers of rings, but, uh, you know, that's my understanding as well. Yeah, as far as we know, the entire squad gets one, Troy, and, and of course, all the support personnel as well. The, uh, you know, the um, 
all the assistant coaches, of course, and all the, the, the direct football staff. Mal Moore's running out of fingers. Yeah, he's, he just doesn't have much room for, for him anymore. All right, let's go to center and talk to our buddy LD. LD, what's going on? Not much. Hey. Uh, they said that the number one quarterback in the state was going to FSU. Mm -hmm. uh, did uh, Alabama not recruit him? Or? Alabama did recruit him. They were the first school to really recruit him mm -hmm. hard, in fact, LD. You know, sometimes you just, you just don't get guys. Yeah, Alabama recruited him very hard, uh, LD. And when you when you look at, uh, they also recruited Gunnar Keel, who ended up at Notre Dame. They recruited both those guys. They were considered the top two quarterbacks in the country at one point. But you know, Alec Morris, who did sign with Alabama from Allen, Texas, is a guy that came to camp, and uh, he really did really well. So, you know, I think Alabama got a good one in him. You know, Rodney, we don't have a lot of time, but but Cecil Hurd had an interesting column about, and we've talked about this before. You know, certain schools have personalities. Alabama's is all about winning, but as far as producing what you would call quote unquote big time quarterbacks or signing those kind of players, in recent years it just hasn't hasn't happened. Yeah, and I think Alec Morris fits that mold. Yeah, he seems to be a. a a uh, more of a, a workman-like quarterback. Although I will say this, McCarron and Sims both highly recruited, and McCarron doing a good job, and Sims still waiting for his opportunity. All right, coming up, Nick Saban uh, is recognized for his efforts off the field. We'll have that when we come back. And finally tonight, Alabama football coach Nick Saban has been awarded the Grant Taft Breaking the Silence Award. The award recognizes Saban for his efforts in youth and suicide prevention. He has exceeded expectations as a National Awareness Ambassador, a special award for Alabama's football coach. He does a lot uh, off the field as well. All right, that's going to do it for tonight's show. It's dinner time this evening, Rodney. We're headed over to share good friends over at Buddy's Rib and Steak in Northport. Come out and join us for dinner about 7.50. For Rodney Orr and our producer, John Huddleston, our director, John Newman, and our entire TITV crew, I'm Gary Harris. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you again next week, everybody. Have a good night.